Good evening. Good evening. God bless you all, family of God. Good to see you here. Praise God. Amen. We've been uh, uh, ex experiencing some, some awesome growth lately. And uh, it's very exciting to see what God is doing in our midst and uh, the people he's been touching and bringing in. And uh, they're just going to add, you know, new synergy to what God is doing here. And it's very exciting. So uh, praise God. Amen. So, uh, and I want to run through our vision statement. I want us to get used to doing that. I'm going to do it every service, at least in the mornings. And I think begin to do it in the evenings, too. And uh, eventually we want to be able to uh, even say it together um, so that people understand. So everybody in our congregation knows it. When somebody says, what's the Faith Christian Center all about? And you can say, well, that's the place where we invite people um, where we invite people to connect with God and his people to grow in the relationship with God and with the community of Christ followers and to become a spirit-filled uh, disciple of God. So that's what we're all about. Amen? And so we want to see happen as people come to the Lord and grow in the Lord. Let's stand this evening as we get ready to go to the Lord in praise and worship. And again, I want to invite you to set aside any distractions that, uh, that may be trying to occupy your mind and instead focus on the Lord and let's give him our best worship tonight. Amen? All right? Let's give him our best worship. Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight, dear God, for your tremendous love for us. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our midst and what you're doing across our country. Lord, truly you're pouring out the spirit of revival. And Lord, we long to be part of that. We want to be in the mix. We want to be in your presence. We want to be where you're moving and where you're doing great and mighty things because you are a great and mighty God. And so, Lord, we pray that you pour out your spirit tonight in a very powerful way. Lord, as we come before you to give you praise and glory and honor, declaring that you are worthy to be praised. Anoint our worship, giving, preaching, praying, everything that happens here tonight, Lord. We offer it all to you, dear Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Let's worship together.
speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to break declaring there is hope and there is freedom I speak testimony from Devin and the reason he was here in church this morning is that someone spoke Jesus to him that the Lord spoke prophetically to Amber that lady and she went over you know and they you know started to talk with him but his plan was to not go home that day he was going to end his life but Jesus intervened someone spoke to him they spoke life to him because there's power in the name of Jesus there are power there's power in his words I I just was amazed I never get tired of hearing testimonies like that when it just reminds us of you know of the power the power of our God and how he intervened and how he saw Devin there that day and how he intervened. He just sent regular people there and spoke to them. And how, you know, how he intervened that day. Because somebody spoke Jesus. Lord, help us to be in tune with your spirit. That we are always available to speak life to someone. Your words are power. Your name is life, Lord. That we are always available to use. Any time of the day or night, Lord God, we are always available for you. Thank you, Jesus.
God is so good, isn't he? Hallelujah. I feel an awesome presence of the Lord in this place tonight. Amen. My heart's plea to the Lord is to bring in the lost. Bring in the lost. Bring those out of darkness into the marvelous light of Jesus. Bring them into his presence. Amen. Those that are bound by drugs and alcohol and immorality and everything else that the world out there has to offer. Let them come in and be sanctified and set apart from the world and be made free in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the risen Christ. Hallelujah to the risen Christ. prayer encounter God moved on us to pray a prayer that I want us to pray again tonight calling out to the east and west and north and south in every direction for them to give up their dead and trespasses and sins and bring them into the house of the Lord bring them in to hear the word of the Lord amen bring them in and be touched by God and changed by God not that they were just resolved in their minds or their own self, but they'd come and lay their, themselves on the altar of God and say, Lord, here am I. Do in me what you want to do in me. Work in me what you want to work in me. Then we will see people come to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. I praise you, Jesus. I praise you, Lord. Bring in the lost, Jesus. Bring in the lost. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. Yes, I will say to the north, give up, and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far and yes. my daughters from the ends of the earth. Even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we call to the north. Give up your dead and trespasses and sins. Give them up. We call them into the house of the Lord. Come into the house of the Lord. Come into the sanctuary of God. Come into the presence of the living God and taste and see that he is good. Be set free. Be healed. Be saved. Be touched and changed and renewed and restored by the power of God's Spirit. Come in in the name of Jesus Christ. We turn to the west, and we call forth the dead and trespasses and sins to the west. Give up your dead. We call them into the house of the Lord. Come into the house of the Lord and find Jesus. Hallelujah. Come in and find liberty and freedom from sin. Come in and find liberty and freedom from bondages, from bondages and addictions. Be set free in the name of the Lord. Come, you in the west, come into the house of the Lord. Come and be healed. Come and be saved. Come and be touched by the almighty power of God. We turn to the south and we call the dead and trespasses and sins from the south to come in to the house of the Lord. To the south, give up your dead in sins. We call them into the house of the Lord. Come in. Come in and find Jesus. Hallelujah. He said, come on to me, all ye that labor heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Lord, we call them in in the name of Jesus. Come, come into the house of the Lord and find the Lord. Come out of darkness into the light that you can he see Jesus, that you can see Jesus, that you can experience him. We turn to the east and we speak to the east to give up your dead in trespasses and sins. Give them up, give them up. They belong in the house of the Lord. We call them into the house of God. Come in the name of the Lord. Come into the house of the Lord and be set free. Be healed. Be strengthened. Be restored. Be set free. Be saved from your sin. We call them in from the east. Come into the house of the Lord. 
We believe and we receive, Lord. We decree and we declare it. We speak it. We speak Jesus. We speak Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, in every direction, from the west and north and east and south, we speak Jesus. Lord, we speak Jesus in the streets. We speak Jesus in the mountains. We speak Jesus in the valleys. We speak Speak Jesus in the, in the streets, Lord. Come into the house of the Lord and find Jesus the Christ, the Son of the living God. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray, we speak, we declare, we decree. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, we just want to see people come to you, oh God. Bring them in, Jesus. And Lord, help us to love them into your kingdom. Help us to minister love to them, Lord. Help them to minister forgiveness to them, Lord. Help them to, Lord, find you. Help them to live for you and serve you, oh God. Draw them in, Jesus. Lord, we saw a scripture this morning in Jeremiah. Diane, come read, read that for me, okay? Jeremiah um, 31.3. Jeremiah 31.3. I think this is the one about drawing because they don't come unless God draws them. Amen. And he doesn't draw them unless we cry out for them, unless we ask for them, unless we plea for the lost to come in. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Those online come into the house of the Lord. Those listening online, come, come into the house of the Lord, experience Jesus like never before. If you've been out of church, come. If you've been out in the darkness, come to the light. If you've been out there staggering about, not wandering about away from God, come back to the Lord. Come back to the Lord. Come into the house of the Lord. Those online, we invite you. We want you to come. We want to see God touch your life. Hallelujah. He loves you. He cares for you. And he wants you back in the sheepfold. Come into the house of the Lord and experience the loving God that shed his blood for you and died for you and loves you and cares for you. Come and bring your neighbor. Bring your friend. Bring anybody. Bring everybody. Leave the dog at home, but bring everybody else, okay? Hallelujah. Come into the house of the Lord. Yes. The Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. With loving kindness have I drawn thee. You know, church, we're not here because we chose it. We're here because God loves us and drew us. He's shown us a better way. He showed us a better way in house and online. Jesus can show us a better way, a better way of living, a better way of loving, a better way of being. Heavenly Father, we just want you to have your way in this place, Lord. We want you to have your way in our hearts and lives. We give ourselves to you, Lord. We give our church to you, Jesus. We give our past, our present, our future to you, Lord. We want you to just touch people's hearts and lives, oh God. Those that are out there in darkness and bondage and fear and anger and all these things they can be set free from and they can find peace and joy and love in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Draw them in, Lord. Draw them in, Jesus. Draw them in, oh God. Draw them in, Jesus. Only you can do it, God. We can't talk them out of, into it. If, if we talked them into it, somebody could talk them out of it. Lord, draw them in, Jesus. And let them find you and experience you, oh God. Draw them in, Jesus. Draw them by your love. Draw them by your love. Draw them by your love, Lord. Draw them by your power and your might. We just want to praise you, Lord. We just want to worship you. We just want to worship you, Jesus. Glory be to Jesus. Glory be to God and the Lamb forevermore. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. 
praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Ever been in one of those moments where you're just not certain how to go forward? <laughs> it's like, Lord, have your way. Do what you want to do, oh God. Isn't he a great God that we serve? It's so much fun to come to church and you just don't know what he's going to do next and who he's going to touch next and who he's going to bring in next. And it's just, it's fun to live for God. It's fun to see what he's doing. He's such an awesome God and he does so much in our hearts and lives. And all we got to do is cry out for him to do it. To cry out, to cry out. I encourage our body of believers, cry out to the Lord. Cry out, get deeper in prayer. Get deeper in prayer and praise. Get deeper in crying out to him. Get deeper in self-discipline. Get deeper in seeking God. Crying out to him. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, guys. Amen. If God moves on us to come back in the altars later after the sermon, uh, we'll do that, all right? Whatever. How many of you believe whatever he wants, right? We'll do whatever he wants. Glory be to Jesus. A broken and contrite heart he will not turn away from. Amen. Those of you that have family that's not living for God, cry out to the Lord for them. Cry out to the Lord for them. Believe him to touch them. Amen. And we're going to continue to worship in our giving. If we could have Diane round up an usher. Steve, you're going to come? All right. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We're going to receive our evening tithes and love offering. We thank you and appreciate uh, all that you do and uh committing your life to Christ and committing your, your finances to him as well, turning, uh, turning everything over in faith to believe and trust God and walk in his spirit. Father, we thank you this evening, O oh God, as you pour out your spirit upon us, Lord, uh, that you call us to return to you a tenth of all that you bless us with. We gladly do that, dear Lord. And Lord, we thank you that as we sow this seed into your kingdom and plant this, in good soil, dear God, then you will sprout it and grow it and bring harvest increase and blessing into the hearts and lives of each one. Father, in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the name of Jesus. God is so good. Amen. Well, because... It's <clears throat> Mike Callis's birthday today. We are going to have some food downstairs tonight after the evening service. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Money's just running right up here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Um, we have some, some, were you done? No. Yeah, so I, yeah, okay. just come downstairs tonight. Yes. You know, we'll have we, some. we have some, I was going to say, we have some leftover food from previous activities. And uh, we met with the 20-somethings on Friday night. Uh, yeah, broke a three-day fast then, and we had hot beefs. Oh, man. She was heating those up all day long. The house smelled like hot beef. It was killing me, Every I'm telling you. Every time I make those, it just smells the whole house up for you. I feel like days. There was a whole lot of dying to self going on in my life. <laughs> hey, man. Oh, man. There's two things that really get me, the hot beefs and popcorn smell in the house, you know, when you're fasting. But anyway, God is on the move, and I just want to encourage people to uh, seek his face and reach out in terms of fasting and, uh, and prayer, intense prayer, deep prayer, broken prayer before God. And uh, let's, let's just go there. I believe the prayer encounter that we went through uh, the weekend last was that last weekend I think last weekend or the one before no it was last week no yeah two weekends ago right you know that God is really moving Pastor Dan have you seen things uh, happening up there by you 
Got a praise report, brother? Peculiar? Well, we, well it we've, could we've be. been having some interesting services. Good. The Lord's moving. Good. Can I it, say something else, though? Yeah. yeah. I feel like, um, you know, when we were worshiping the Lord, particularly when we started singing that song, um, Jesus, Lover of My Soul, Yeah. you know, the part of it that says I will worship him until the very end you know and I was thinking that um, as we were singing that song and then I thought about that scripture in Ecclesiastes it says whatsoever your hands find to do do it now because there's a time when you go to the grave and there won't be any work done That's right. That's and right, further that. as I was think thinking about that song until the very end that this might sound negative but it's not <laughs> we have no idea how quick that end might be and how right. quick you know, and I was looking at Mitch as he was taking care of his four little ones as Adina was up in the front, and I was thinking it wasn't that long ago that I was that guy chasing around four little girls uh -huh. while Tina was up front with worship and stuff like that. And just looking around and thinking about different ones that um, we really have to roll our sleeves up and get busy for yeah. God. And the other thing that the Lord was showing me with all that is that, you know, David's son died, and he grieved that boy but there came a place a time where he had to realize that that boy was dead and he wasn't coming back and he had to stop the grieving process there's a time for grieving I know that very well but there's also a time where we have to stand up and say the grieving's done I need to roll my sleeves up now and yes. get busy for God because if we think about those things too long that are dead it won't be long before we're right there, and I think the scripture is telling us to roll our sleeves up and just simply get busy, just simply get busy for God. Yeah. Um, yeah. I felt that very strong during yeah. worship because I think all of us can have something that we continually look at, and it's dead. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying, stand up. David stood up. He yes. washed his face, and he went on, and he said, you know what? My son can't return to me, but one day I'll return to him. Right now, yes, I'm just going to simply yeah. get busy and do what God has called me to do. It's been said, when the horse is dead, dismount. Yeah, move on. When the horse is dead, dismount. Right, amen? And move on. God's doing a new thing, amen? Yes. God is doing a new thing. Mm -hmm. Praise God, amen. Uh, anybody else have a testimony? Um, I have a testimony, so... Uh, for a while, I had some health issues uh, going on, and I had a possible scare of breast cancer, and because I had found a lump, and they had found three in my mammogram, and I had on Monday some tests ran, and it all came back benign. So, praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. That's answered yes. prayer. Yes, it is. For those of us that knew about it. We were praying diligently, and that had to happen. That just had to happen that way. And I'm so thankful that the Lord uh, intervened in that. However he did, uh, I believe that he did. Amen? Yes. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for sharing that. Amen. Amen. Is that it? I, I want to say this before we uh, bring Adina up here to preach tonight, is that... Um, um, we're growing in, in so many different ways, and one of those ways is uh, young people coming on board and getting involved in, in the national level forerunner program. And we've got three people from our church here, uh, Adina and America and Victor, that are all signed up for this, uh, that starts on Monday, starts tomorrow. So I want to pray a prayer for them that God will touch them in a very special way um, and help them through this three-month uh, course that they're in. And when they get to the end of that, they're actually uh, eligible to meet the board even for credentials, for first level of credentials. So I uh, don't know if that will happen in uh, any or all the cases, but uh, I, I'm hoping so. Amen. I mean, the, uh, the opportunity is there. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for these three and also for Ben, Lord, up in Elvin. Uh, they're getting involved in the Forerunner program, Lord, as you are moving people forward in ministry. 
dear God, and, and we want to be on the cutting edge and the front edge of what you're doing in terms of that, dear Father. So, Lord, we ask for a release of your anointing to come upon them, Lord, that you, and we rebuke all fear and worry about what courses would be like or course studies or workload or essays or whatever. Lord, we, we just rebuke all the fear from that. And, Lord, we pray that each one will look forward to it. They'll be excited about it, dear God, and that you will move in a very mighty and powerful way, Lord, and open eyes of understanding and reveal truth to them, dear Lord, and do great and mighty things uh, through this program, dear Father. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. God is good. Amen. Can I, I just, right. that, just a testimony that um, we're pretty excited about about church. We feel like you know, from the prayer encounter, you know, us praying from the north, south, east, and the west to bring people in, that God has been answering that prayer. And <clears throat> we've been, for quite a few weeks, we've been um, counting, you know, just to see our attendance level. Okay. Since the 24th of October. But um, last week, uh, when we counted, we had 51... The week before, 55, but today we counted, and it was 63. Yeah. And I'm and between mine and Judy's class, we had 17 kids. I had nine in my class, and Judy had eight. So I, I we're just excited. For a long time, Judy and I were kind of disappointed because she'd have Zoe, and I'd have... Aries, or I sometimes mention, you know, a lot of times mention Adina too, but it, it just seemed like sickness was hitting, you know, and, and then, you know, they weren't able to be here, and, and so we were just kind of discouraged, but, you know, we kept praying, and Thursday morning prayer, we kept, we just kept praying and asking the Lord to bring, you know, the, the kids back in, and, and consistently, and, and wow, they, you know, God has been, you know, people have been coming more consistently, you know, bringing their kids, and we're really, you know, we're really excited. He had four, which is good, because some, yeah, because sometimes he would just have, oh, in addition, yeah, I know, we're just very excited about it. All right, so with that, we'd like to have, yes, Adina is going to bring the word tonight, and one of our, you know, yep, and going to, and start in the Forerunner program, so we're excited, the mother of those four kids that we're <laughs> excited to have in church here. No, two of them were sitting next to you. They were watching you. Oh, she was clapping her hands. <laughs> I 
Yeah, they're just watching me awkwardly stand here staring at Pastor, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, I'm uh, taking a, a leap of faith here and standing out here where Pastor's zone, I call it. So, um, yeah, this is new for me. I don't like standing out front. I can get up there and play an instrument and sing, no problem. But when it comes to speaking, I, I don't like it. It makes me nervous. But um, And to make matters worse, the Lord told me he had something for me, but told me he wasn't going to tell me until the last minute. Because he wanted, my, uh, my theme is faith. He wanted me to have faith throughout this and to basically, as pastor likes to call it, shoot from the hip. So I have almost no notes and just a few verses, and I'm going off the top of my head and, and following, you know, where lo the Lord wants me to to go, yep, so, yep, so my first verse is James 1, 6, but let him ask in faith, with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind, so when we are asking the Lord for something, if we're asking and we have any even like a small inkling of doubt, it's, it, it's chaos, because when we start to doubt God in the midst of asking for his help, you know, why, why should he help us? Why should, if we're sitting there questioning him, let me rephrase that, if we're sitting here asking the Lord for these things, like, Lord, help me throughout my day, and you're, but in the back of your mind, you're thinking, yeah, this is impossible. This mountain, nah, -uh, not going to move. Not going to happen. If you're being a negative Nancy, sorry, Nancy. If you're being a negative Nancy, <laughs> if you're being negative in your praying, you're going to be tossed around. You're going to be like paperweight, and it's going to be, you're going to be distracted in your prayers for one thing. If you're constantly thinking about all the negatives, you're going to be, it's going to be like a massive storm. You know, you're going to have rain coming down and wind whipping you back and forth. It's going to be, you know, chaos. And in the Bible, some of the things, you know, there's tons of verses about faith. So I'm not going to go and read every single one. Otherwise, we'll be standing here all night. Um, or I'll be standing. You guys will be sitting. You're probably sleeping. But <laughs> anyway, so one of the things that it says in the Bible is to have a childlike faith. And if you've ever spoken to a child, you know they're, they're, they're gullible in a sense. They're easily swayed. You tell a child oh, this is not real, they're going to be, oh, okay, it's not real, all right. You tell them, oh, this is real, God is real. They're going to believe it, just like that. And as they get older, that is when you need to start introducing more, like having them in church. Like when they're, um, when they're like two, two, three years old, you tell them and they, they don't have questions. They just automatically, that's how we need to be. Automatically, we just need to believe. We ask the Lord for something, we need to say, okay, God's going to do it. We got it. But um, as they get older, we have questions. Uh, um, my youngest son, uh, or sorry, my oldest son, reverse that, he has um, questions almost all the time. He's at that age where he's always questioning, oh, well, why does it say this in the Bible? Or why did pastor say this in, in like during worship when pastor exhorts? He'll ask about, you know, various things, and I have to be equipped as a parent and have faith in God that he's going to guide me to guide my children. Because that childlike faith will eventually start to dwindle, and they'll start to have questions. And it can apply to us as well. We, as we get older, we have questions. You know, God, why, why is this the way it is? And it, it's important to have discernment and to be able to know God's voice and to spend time in prayer with him so that way, we can know, get those answers that we need because sometimes only he has those answers. You can go to your pastor or your uh, a fellow Christian, and they might not have the answer. And chances are, 90 or 100%, that God is going to have that answer for you. Another thing it says is to have a faith of a mustard seed. And in the Bible, it's, it speaks a lot about seeds. Seeds is a very common reference in there. Um, and I like to... Um, say that while it says to have faith of a mustard seed, it's important to nurture that seed. 
It's so important to grow that seed so it grows into what it's meant to be. And um, the next uh, set of verses I would like to speak on is uh, Matthew 14, 22 to 33. Um, I believe we all know the story, <laughs> but um, I'm going to read it anyway. So immediately... Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. Now when the evening came, he was alone there, but the boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I. Do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So he said, Come. And when Peter had come, out, come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid and beginning to sink. He cried out, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they go into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Yeah. I think this is very relatable in a sense uh, in today's modern day standards as well because oftentimes we, we, uh, God calls us out when we go out. We go out and do what God has asked us to do, but then things start to get scary. God asks something too much for us. And, and then we start looking around. We see those waves. We see that wind, and we're like, oh, Lord, I don't know. I don't know about this, God. This is scary. If I take one more step, I'm done. Are yeah, are you, yeah, are you sure? And that second that we doubt and we fall through, he's right there to catch us. It says in there, immediately, he reached out for Peter. It didn't say God was like, all right, yeah, I'm going to let you learn your lesson right here. You know, how many of us have parents have done that with their kids? You tell them time and time again, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, okay, I'm done telling them not to do that. They get hurt, and then they come to you crying. You're like, well, I done told you. Jesus isn't like that. We fall, or we even start to fall, and he's right there. He outstretches his arm for us. And we just have to grasp it. That's the important part, though, is that we got to meet him halfway. Because if, if he reaches out his arm and we just continue to sink and we ignore him and we don't trust in him and have, our, have faith in him, we're going to drown. And it's going to become overwhelming. We're not going to know how to deal with the situations that come, come at us. And um, um, and I think it's, it's funny because we, we will start out oftentimes when the Lord tells us to do something, we'll start out very strong. And we're like, yes, we got this. We're getting this. We're, we're doing this. And, and we just show, f but we're human, so we show fear. We have fear. We get scared of things unknown. It's normal. But God knows all. He is the beginning. He is the end. He's seen everything. He knows everything. So we have to have faith and trust in him that he knows what our path is, even if, it, even if we're taking a step and we can't see in front of us. If we can't see the next step, it's okay. We have to reach his outstretched hand to pull us through that darkness, to guide us, to be that light. And um, I wanted to point out, too, in the dictionary about faith, it, um, there's a second meaning to it. Um, but in the Bible, we know it means uh, faith is the things um, not seen, the thing, belief in things not seen. And in the dictionary, there's a secondary meaning, um, which is also complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And the way I view that is similar to how you would your husband or your wife. You're, you expect your husband or your wife to be faithful. You expect um, that when your husband, I'm just using husband because, you know, I'm the wife, but uh, when your husband goes out there and he says, oh, I'm going to work, I'm working overtime, you have faith that that's what he's doing. Yeah. And in the, in the flip side, 
when your husband says he's doing that, he better be doing what he says he's doing. <laughs> because he is supposed to be faithful. So faithful is uh, being, sorry, having faith is believing in the unseen things, but being faithful is an action. So when, when we are go through our lives, are we being faithful to God? We might have faith, but are we being faithful? Are we cheating on God, in other words? Are we putting other things above him? God the Almighty, are we putting things above him? Are we putting money above him? Are we putting our spouse above him? Are we putting our kids above him? And that's the hardest thing I had to learn as I grew in my faith is that he comes first. Then your family and your loved ones, and then you. We are at the bottom. That does not mean we mean less than other people, but that means in our hearts, we have to put God first over everything. And that's really hard. It really is, as, as in the flesh, because it's really easy to unknowingly idolize your spouse. And that's something I have seen in, in a lot of people. They love their spouse, and that's great, and that's important. But you're putting that person above God. And if you're putting time with your spouse before time with God, that's when we start running into trouble. And likewise with money. Money, fast cars, that the things of the world we're putting before God, that's cheating on God. He's faithful to us, and he expects us to be faithful to him with our time, with our love, with our mind, our soul. If we're giving up God to do other things that appease our flesh, that's cheating on God. You go to the bars and you, have a, and you get drunk instead of going to church, or praying, that's cheating on God. There are so many ways that you can cheat on God. And yes, spiritual adultery, as Pastor has said. And it's so important that we keep our hearts and our minds and our souls in check. Because you may do it without realizing it. I would say that I was guilty of borderline putting my spouse above God because, you know, you get that when you first get married, you get that honeymoon phase. And everything is all honky-dory and, and lovely. And, and you just want to spend all your time with that person. And that's great. It really is. But make time for God. And there should be no reason why with your spouse you can't spend time with God. And that, that's the best bonding time you could honestly have. And um, the... Uh, sorry, hold on. I lost my spot. Um, the other thing is, too, with faith. If we have faith when we're praying for something and we don't get that thing, the hardest thing is to trust God that he knows why and that, he, that there is a reason for it. He knows what's in our hearts. He knows what our desires are, but there's also a reason why some things don't go the way we want it, even though we really desire it. And that's the hardest thing is to keep your faith when God tells you no. We're like kids. When you tell your kids no, chances are they're throwing a temper tantrum. Yes, please, begging, just, you know, hands and knees, all that, crying. You know, and it's, it's hard to, to, to understand that. And that is when you need to pray and seek God and ask him, why is it this way? Why can't I have this thing? Or what, is, what would be hindering me if I had that? And sometimes things will come to you, but it's just not in his, ti in his timing. We want it now, and he's like, wait. You know, and it's, I always akin that to my dog. You know, you tell her to wait when you're trying to feed her, and she gets really excited and tries to, you know, eat, eat out of the, as you're putting the bowl down, she'll try to stick her head in there, and you have to tell her, wait. That's kind of how we are as humans. We got, God dangles, or not dangles, but we have something we really want and desire, and then God will go, wait. And then we have to go, come on, why? Come on, I really have to wait. And it's, it's really hard to have that patience and that faith and to remain, remain faithful through that. Um, but the going back to uh, Peter here when he fell into the water, 
um, it just took that little bit of doubt, like it said in the first verse in, in James 1, 6. It said, he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. He doubted, and he was tossed into the sea. But God was there to catch him. And when there, there's no mountain that, that God can't move. There's no chain that God can't break. There is no hold that the devil has on you that God can't break. God is the alpha, the omega, the beginning, the end. He is, it says in there, I am the I am. He is the finisher. He won that battle on the cross. He sacrificed his son as pastor spoke this morning. He gave his only son. How many of you could give up one of your kids for someone else? I know I couldn't. It's, it's phenomenal, just, just the amazing capacity of love that he has that we can't even begin to understand. There is nothing that he won't crumble for us. Any stronghold that tries to hold us down, he's right there to tear that off. All we have to do is have faith. When he reaches out his hand, we just have to take it. And that's the most important thing. We have to meet God halfway in being faithful. And another um, uh, amazing show of faith is in uh, Luke 8, 40 through 48. So it was when Jesus returned that the multitude welcomed him, or they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was the ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and begged him to come to his house. For he had an only daughter about 12 years of age, and she was dying. But as he went, the multitudes thronged him. Now a woman having a, blow, a flow of blood for 12 years, who had spent all her livelihood on physicians and could not be healed by any, came from behind and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her flow of blood stopped. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied it, Peter and those with him said, Master, the multitudes throng and press you, and you say, Who touched me? There's Peter again. But, <laughs> but Jesus said, Somebody touched me, for I perceived power going out from me. Now when the woman saw that she was not hidden, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared to him in the presence of all the people the reason she had touched him and how she had healed him immediately. And he said to her, Daughter, be of good cheer. Your faith has made you well. Go in peace. That is the type of faith that we need. The faith to just touch the hem of his garment and then we're healed. We just have the have faith to ask and he will give it to us. Those chains, the, the pain, the anxiety, the depression, the, the fear, that all that, he will break those chains, he, all those chains that bind you. Pornography, drinking, alcohol, any addiction, you name it. He can do it and only he can. That freedom that you feel from God, releasing you, delivering you, is like no other. I tell you what, I had a fear of, or I had a um, really bad anxiety growing up. I was always fearful of everything. I was afraid to step out. And um, God had called me to, uh, when I was 12 years old, he had called me to start worship. I had... I've been playing guitar since I was eight, and I knew I could sing, you know, in key, kind of. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so the Lord was like, well, I want you to be on the youth worship team. And I, at the time, I didn't know that Richard had started that. And he had called me a week later and was like, hey, let's, you know, you want to be help, uh, help out on the worship team that I have for the youth group? And I said, well, I don't know. Um, I know the Lord just told me I should, but I'm kind of scared. You know, I was a little bit like Peter in that moment. I was scared. I took that, that step, and, you know, I was afraid to put myself out there. And then through that, I learned how to, when I finally got up there and I started getting comfortable, I learned how to do things for the Lord. And I learned that even though I was fearful things were turning out okay because I had God. I was afraid. I was standing up there my first time playing the song, and I was like, oh, Lord, I don't know. I'm really scared. I'm shaking. I'm nervous. And I went forward. I played. We did it. And we had 
a move of the spirit. And it's, it's phenomenal because we were all teenagers at that time, and we only knew three songs. So, <laughs> you know, it was, it was a little rocky, but even though things are a little rocky, God shows through, and his presence will manifest if our hearts are in the right spot. That's what's important is our hearts being in the right spot. You know, we, just a few, a couple Sundays ago, we were doing, a, was it Release the Sound? We had never really done that before at all. We did like maybe a 30 second practice in the morning and then Diane's like, well, why don't we do that? And you know, we all went back and forth, I don't know, and the spirit moved and we did it and it was phenomenal. Well, okay. The move of the spirit was phenomenal. <laughs> yes, his influence, yes. And um, actually through being comfortable playing music in front of people is how I became comfortable standing up here talking today. And that's, I never saw myself from the beginning. I was like, I'm never going to be standing up there speaking. So I don't have to worry about it. I never, I never thought I'd be up here. And, you know, I think that God has a sense of humor because shortly after he called me to preach. And I had fought him a year and a half on it. I was like, no, Lord. I was like, nah, you're not me. I can't, I can't do that. And um, COVID hit. So one of the blessings from COVID was that pastor had asked me, hey, you want to preach? And I was like, well, I don't know. <laughs> You know, I had something, because I had mentioned to him that I had something, and then he asked me if I wanted to speak it. And I was thinking to myself, I, I don't know if I can do this, but what better time than when you don't have to stare at people, and you don't have people staring at you? <laughs> yeah, it was, yep, yep, it was just past your night. It almost felt like I was just having a little powwow with them. And so I got comfortable with that, and then sure enough, once we had church regular basis, I was starting to speak on Sunday nights in front of people. And it wasn't so scary then, and I had, I had become comfortable. And if your heart, I just really feel if your heart is in the right spot, and that's like the main point of my message is if your heart is in the right spot, God will reach that arm out for you, his hand out towards you, and you just have to grasp it. And, you know, the, I think I love the disciples. You know, I love Peter and all them because, you know, they're, they're not perfect people. They were just a ragtag team, you know, like Jesus had pulled together, and they did amazing things. And, you know, each and every one of us, we're just a ragtag team. You know, God pulled us from all sorts of places, and um, just the, the way he moves when we are focused on him during our services, during worship, during our sermons, it's if we're focused on him, and not worrying about the little details, he's going to move, and it's going to be powerful. I mean, you look at those revivals that are going on, that's sparking out. Um, it, it's just phenomenal. I spoke to, uh, when we had the 20-somethings get together, there was this band um, that I told people about. It was a Christian metal band, and they had played in, like, a, a bar and grill, kind of like um, Red Robins or something like that, you know, where they've got the food area and music, and, and then there's, like, a separate bar area. They had played there, and at the end, they did a worship song. And it was a soft song, soft worship song. I can't remember which one it was. But next thing you know, these people were leaving the bars, and they were coming over. They left those drinks yeah. right at the counter, and they walked over to where they were praying and singing. And they got on their knees, and they raised their hands. These were people who were just getting drunk and cussing and smoking and having whatever time of their life or what they thought was the time of their life. And next thing you know, each and every one of them, the, the band posted about it and had some pictures. There was not a single person sitting by their drinks. They were all moved forward at the stage, and they were on their knees raising as the band members came around and prayed for them. If God can reach people in the bars, I mean, that's crazy to me. When I first heard that, I was like, no way, in a bar. That just goes to show the immense impact that the Holy Spirit can have. He can reach into the littlest tiny corners, anywhere that we as humans cannot reach, he will reach. Those, um, I guarantee you, most of those people's lives changed. Even if they didn't make that commitment right that night, that seed is right there. 
they will always know that somebody had, that that band had prayed for them and that they felt something. They had felt something they had never felt before that alcohol never did for them, that drugs never did for them. And that's, that's such, that's the impact we need to have with our faith as Christians. Those guys could have easily been like, well, we're not going to do a prayer or anything because, you know, we're, there's a bar right there. No one's going to come. They could have easily done that and walked out after their set. But they were like, no, we're going to do this. This is for Jesus. We're going to do this. They did it. And look how he manifested. Look, look what happened. All these people that you would never think would get on their knees, raise their hands and pray, crying out to God. I mean, they, these people had tears down their face. And they were praying, and their lives, I guarantee you, were changed forever. Yeah. Forever. I will never forget my first time that I really genuinely felt the Holy Spirit. And that was when I was at church camp. And that was also when I got saved. I was 12 years old, and I got saved. And that had impacted me for my entire life. I felt that. And it guided me through a lot of the decisions that I have made throughout my life. I am very, very fortunate that I didn't have some of the upbringing or the issues that my family members had. I have a lot of alcoholics in my family. But I never had the desire to, to get drunk. I never, God impacted my life so much that he protected me from a lot of that stuff. And I went through high school in middle school, I went through bo both of those with that same strong faith because of God and the way he impacted me. Once you feel that, once you feel the Holy Spirit, it's, it's over. It's, it's a game changer. And you're going to want more, and you're going to be hungry for more and thirsty for more. And he's going to fill you until you're full. He's going to fill you until your cup is overflowing. And there's going to be no, you're going to feel like there's no going to be no room. And that's when you get slain in the spirit and you're on the floor. <laughs> I mean, that's happened to me plenty, plenty of times, especially at church camp. There's something about those grounds that are just the powerful. You step on there and you could feel the Holy Spirit. It's just such an amazing place. So many lives have gotten saved there. And uh, matter of fact, my, uh, my husband actually got saved there as well. And it was shortly after, it was a couple months after we started dating. And I had told him when we first started dating, I was like, I expect you at some point to get saved. <laughs> And uh, I told my mom that. She goes, she goes, really? You told him that? I was like, yes, I did. I, I told him I was like, a date to marry, and if you're not getting saved at some point, you're out. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I didn't pressure him. So, you know, my mom's like, you didn't pressure him, did you? No, I didn't pressure him. He went up on his own, of his own volition. When they called for people to be saved, he went up there of his own volition and got saved that night. And in another way, like just being faithful, like my husband and I for the longest time have been, um, we've always tried to make it to every service, you know, despite health complications or whatever. And this past year has been the, the, the worst struggle for us because it's been sickness or my health and it's just back and forth. And in, at some point, um, a few months ago, I told God, or uh, I told the devil, actually, I said, I am a child of God, listen. And... You have no control over my life. You need to stop these attacks right now because I belong in the house of God. I do not belong here sick or in pain because I am healed by and bought by that blood on the cross. And ever since I did that, I have had a lot easier time going to church. Ever since I stood up, stood my ground, I put on that shield of faith and I was like, devil, you're done. And it's um, the impact it's had on my kids, too. And it's, I mean, a little bit before they started acting up. They were on the ground. They saw a pastor, you know, on the ground and praying, and they mimicked him. And while right now it's mimicking, as they get older, they're going to see that, and they're going to start begin to understand. It's the little things, planting those little seeds, those mustard seeds as they grow. Or even if you're an adult, those mustard seeds that you plant in fellow adults, that's going to, someday they're going to look at that seed and they're going to be like, huh, wonder what that does. And then next thing you know, they might wander across the church. And then they get saved and that seed will grow. That's why it's so important to plant as many seeds as we can, try to save as many souls as we can and have the faith, 
If we're faithful, that's one of the things God calls us to do is to preach the gospel to all the world. And that's a part of being faithful. So any chance you get to talk to someone about God is, you know, take it. If God is leading you to talk to somebody, do it. It's, I know it can be kind of embarrassing. I've been in instances at work where I was like, well, I don't know if I should say something. I want to be like that crazy Christian lady at work. You know, that's just not a good name. But, um, you know, there came to a point where I was like, you know what, I don't care. I'm going to talk to somebody. And uh, I prayed about it, and God had led me to talk to somebody, and it turns out she was a Christian too. But she was a baby Christian. So she was so new to everything, and I was able to to guide her to verses. I was able to help her. You know, while we're at work too, we're just sitting there working and talking about God and Bible verses and, and what, what God says in the Word. And now today she still is, you know, she's growing in God, growing in the Lord. Uh, I would, but she moved out of state. <laughs> but um, it was just phenomenal that, like, you know, you can meet people in all stages of their growth as a Christian. And if God tells you to speak to them, speak to them. Have faith that it's going to turn out okay, even if it's, a, you know, a little awkward at first. And my husband's a lot better at talking to people than I am about God. He's, you know, there's so many coworkers he's talked to about him. But, um... I, uh, where I was going before, I got sidetracked. I'm just going to blame it on mom brain. But uh, <laughs> I got sidetracked with um, the, the going to church thing. Um, it, it relates to, as well, to uh, tithing. I'm not here to, to speak about specifically tithing the whole time, but one of the important things that I've also learned was, like, once we started regularly and I told the devil, you know, basically, you have no ground here, um, we, for a short time, I will admit, we're thinking, you know, something's got to give in our budget. And naturally, we're like, we'll just take a little bit from Tide. Just, just a little bit, right? And then it started being like, oh, well, we really need this extra money. Okay, well, let's take a little, just a little bit more, right? And, it, and this was over a span of a few months. Well, what happened when we started taking a little too much, um, cars started breaking down um yeah cars started breaking down I mean it was thing after thing and I'm like god why I'm like well lord why is this happening and he's like well I can't bless what you don't give and I was like "Ooh," <laughs> you know I felt a little schooled there I was like yeah you're right lord you're right and you know and it really ever since then it really put a, a place in my heart for for tithing and making sure that I'm not if I need to rob Peter to pay Paul so to speak it's not robbing God because we need to be faithful to him. We don't want to cheat God. And, it, and, it's, and it's hard. I get it because you see all, sometimes you'll see that money and you're like, oh, that's a lot of money. I wish I could, you know. But then in all reality, when you look at your budget, it's not really that much. And if you budget accordingly, you can survive, I promise. I have four kids. You can survive. If I can, you can but <laughs> just got to have faith. And um, as soon as we started tithing again, um, miraculously our cars stopped breaking down. So, and um, a lot of things have been just coming easier. And um, I like, uh, I heard a preacher say this once, it's called little handfuls with a purpose. So sometimes when you give to God that 10%, you might not see like, oh wow, I got a check in the mail for a thousand dollars. No, it's more so like, we went out to eat one day and someone paid for a meal. Uh, Stuff like that. Yeah. It's, 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 you got to look at the little handfuls that add up. Right. The little blessings. And, you know, it's, it, it boggles my mind. Like, once, once God showed me that, how much he actually was giving, that I didn't realize how much he was blessing that I didn't think about. And um, there's just... Sorry, distraction from my child. But um, the amount of, of faith as we, we grow and, and, and continue to be faithful in God, he will continue to bless us immensely. And as, um, in, as we continue, when we are not here on this earth, our reward is going to be great. Like, it's, it's immense. I mean, I don't know about you, but heaven sounds pretty great right now with all the world 
going on. Like, you know, I kind of look on the news and I just want to turn it off. But unfortunately, I have to kind of pay attention. So, um, but once once we're not on on this earth, the our reward for being faithful to him and being committed to him and not cheating on him will be immense. There's treasure in heaven we don't know about. We don't know about how exactly everything's going to go up there. And it's really exciting to think about as you go toward, you know, you you think about the end of your life and, and some people get scared, but I have peace because I know where I'm going and I'm excited to find out what's up there for me. And and that's that's another part of um, of uh, just leaning on God is is the is uh, not being fearful. You know, part of being faith faith and fear kind of go together. If you're fearful, you kind of not being faithful because in there it says to believe. It doesn't say to like you know kind of doubt or you know God doesn't say well maybe I'll do it. He says, I will. You know, when he, when he grabbed on to Peter's arm, he didn't go psych and then let him drown. <laughs> he went down and picked him up. And he does that with us so often. We'll be so distraught, so broken about the world around us, or we'll be so consumed by what we're going through, we don't see clearly. And we're on the ground and we're crying out to him. He's going to reach down and... And, and with his arms, he's going to cover us. He's our protector. We just have to have faith to grab that hand. We have to have faith to walk through that darkness with him. Because sometimes it is scary, and that's okay to be scared. But that is why we need to lean on him. It says not to lean unto our own understanding. And we need to focus on him. Focus and have faith and belief that he will do as he says, as he says he does in the Bible. I am the I am, I am the beginning and the end, the alpha, the omega. He doesn't say I maybe am, I maybe could. He says I am. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by me. So we need to have faith in Jesus and what he did on that cross for us so that we can see our heavenly Father. And he will vouch for us. He's kind of like our lawyer and our protector all in one. It's like a whole package deal. And, I mean, what better person to have to vouch for you in heaven than, God, or than Jesus? And he, his love, it doesn't matter what you've done in your past. It doesn't matter who you were in the past. His love is all-encompassing. We may not understand it. It's it's, he's omnipotent. He knows what you've done. He's seen it. He's seen it all. You're not the only one that's done it either, probably. I mean, there's, there's billions and billions of people out there. He looks at you, and he still sees a precious treasure. Yes, he, does. he still sees, I want you. He still says that. He looks at you, and he says, I want you, each and every one of you. No matter what you've done in your past, I want you. And we should want him the same way. There's um, a song called Nothing Else that I really like because it says um, in there, I want you and nothing else or nothing more. Something like that. You get the point. But um, it's, it's powerful because it, it's true. Like He wants us, but we have to want him. And he is more than enough for anything that we could ever imagine. So I would just like to, to pray with you guys before I hand it off. Dear Lord, as we go throughout our day, Lord, and our, and our tribulations and the mountains that we may find to be too great or the chains that are too tough to break, God, I pray that we have faith in you that you will break those mountains down to dust, Lord, and that you will break those chains off and free us, Father God, that we will not be fearful, we will not be angry, Lord, that we will have faith in you and in your works, Lord, and in all that you do, because you are the beginning and you are the end, Lord. And the least we could do is to be faithful to you, God. So throughout our lives and throughout our journey, Lord, please help us to continue to grow that mustard seed, Father. Help us to grow it into the biggest tree, Lord, 
so that we can have faith in you in all things, in all things that we do. In your precious son, Jesus' name, amen. Good job, Adina. Good job. My, my, my for a 24-year-old, huh? Amen. Praise God. But you know what? She grew up on this platform. Like she said, learning music here and all of that. And uh, has lived and embraced this stuff. And, you know, when you live it and you work it right, it works for you. True? Amen? You know? I especially like the, the, the comparison of uh, a relationship. You know, like a marital relationship. You know, like, um, you know, can you imagine, you know, saying to your husband or your wife, look, honey, I promise you, I'll be faithful 80% of the time. Eight times out of 10, I'll be there with you in church. I'll, you know, 80% of the time. You know, and she'll say, oh, I am so blessed. Now, how many of you think she'd be blessed if he was faithful 100% of the time? Amen. And that's what God wants of us. He wants us to be sold out. Every bit of us, right? Amen. He, he's a jealous God. He won't share us with any. Praise God. Amen. Anyway, I don't want to get going again. <laughs> Very good job, young lady. We appreciate it so much. You, know, you don't know what a blessing it is to me and Diane um, that, you know, all the years of, of uh, watching you grow up and, you know, pouring into your life and all that, to hear you stand here and preach and share the Word of God like that. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And I was, boy, they really had a move of God with their three songs that they knew. <laughs> but, you know, this, this is what motivates us to be here. And, uh, you know, I mean, we've been here long enough to see generations, uh, you know, grow up and live for the Lord. And, and Adina, and have your little Zephaniah sit next to me there in the pew. That was precious. You know, I love it when he'll come up there. And he's done that some other times, too, and come up and just be next to a pastor when he's worshiping. And we, want these, we want to model this before our kids. Amen? You know, you talk about down that line a little ways. And, uh, you know, we, I, I just want to share with you, our kids grew up in church. They grew up on the platform, right? We made a place for them to be involved in music. They went through music lessons. You know, and all of that, the time invested, work, effort, you know, the, the, the cost. Uh, things just don't happen on their own. You, get, you know what I mean? You just you got to pour into them. And uh, they grew up here, and I, and I want to share with you, they grew up, they were here Sunday morning. They were here Sunday nights. They were here at one time when we did Wednesday nights yet, and they were playing. And Nick was eight years old on the drum when he started playing in the midweek services, and he'd get tired and start to slow down, and the whole worship team was slowing down with him then, you know. Uh, but, you know, look at how it turned, you know, what it turned into. Right now, all, all of our kids, all of our three boys are all living for God. They're all in church. They're involved in, in church somehow, preaching or teaching, pastoring, whatever they're doing. You know, married to Christian women and have their kids growing up that are being taught the ways of the Lord. You know, and they were, like I said, they were here even on Tuesday nights. There were some times when they were, they were playing in church like four times a week. It isn't going to hurt you to demand your kids to be in church. Bring them. That that begins to be a lifestyle. There was a time that we were so bummed out that we thought about quitting. When I mentioned it to Nick, who was the one that gave us the most grief, you know, about, about you know, he said, well, Dad, what else would we do? We don't know any other way to live. You don't, you don't know what that did for me when my kids said that to me. It's like after that, they were on board. You know, they were on board. Bring them up in the house of the Lord. They're kids. They don't decide. You decide. Parents need to, you know, decide for them, right? They're, they're little. They, they want to please the flesh. Is this true? Amen. So, 
Praise God. Amen. Have them in the house of the Lord and be consistent with it, and they will, uh, they'll grow up with it. Aaron, it was, those online, I don't think heard a testimony a while ago, or what you were sharing, but, you know, about Jubilee, that your youngest, you know, that, you know, on, on the, when we were traveling, you know, uh, I think was traveling back from the Indianapolis uh, Encounter Conference, we said, bring her to church. Let's work together so that she will learn how to do church, you know, and, and uh, then they'll grow up and they'll be, they'll be in it, you know, they'll be in it, and She's got a voice. That young lady could one day be singing. My, my, my. She'll tear it up. <laughs> On key. Right? Amen. That's great. Praise God. I'm not going to go longer because uh, we heard some good preaching tonight of a young lady, right? Amen. Good job, Adina. And uh, and all of our, we got, we got seven people now that are in uh, in our Sunday night rotation. Uh, I call it, I have an email that I send out to them, setting it all up in that. Sunday night uh, sp student speakers. Sunday night student speakers. And uh, it's awesome. Because we want to see God raise up people to preach this gospel and go out from here to whatever place God sends them to. You know, and they're all different age brackets, right? Amen. Amen. Let's see. We need somebody to close tonight. And by the way, Diane, we got stuff downstairs, don't we? For oh, she's down there getting it ready. Okay. All right. Um, let's stand, and uh, we're going to dismiss with a word of prayer. Let's see, Nancy, you're over there. Let's have Nancy do it. She's our district women's director. Let's let's have her dismiss with a word of serve this with a word of prayer. Dismiss from the service with a word of prayer. And uh, let's keep on the cutting edge of what God is doing, right? Let's be hungry for the Lord and be in prayer. Step into some fasting. If you haven't ever done that before, ask God to show you or give me a call. I can tell you, you know, about it. And uh, uh, God moves in it. So when you, the, the, the more it costs you, I believe, the more that it benefits you as well. The more he does in response to it. So God bless you guys. Lord, we just lift up your name tonight and every night lord we just thank you for adina's uh, uh preaching about faith lord because we need to remember that our faith should be in you first and foremost we should always think of you first and foremost we should always first thing we get up in the morning should think of you first and foremost lord no matter what our day is going and no matter how our night is going no matter whatever it is no matter whatever trial or tribulation comes along, we need to remember you first and foremost, to go to you first and foremost. And then you always lead and guide us in whatever way we need to have. And you answer our prayers. You answer when we are in trials and tribulations. You are right beside us, walking us through the fire, walking us through the river where the way, so the waves don't come over us, so we won't be burnt. So, Lord, we just praise you and thank you now for your word and for the word that Adina brought tonight. And we ask you, Lord, to just bless the food that is down there and take away any impurities, as Pastor would say. And in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen.